understand. Were you partying? What? Were you partying? My wife punches me out every once in a while. Well, you know, it's good to keep things alive and fresh, right? Surprises are good. <laughs> she was never really into the Me Too movement, except with me, where she just liked to beat me up every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Which keep I, I'm perfectly fine with. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, I, I suppose I could have been a better husband, but I've done the best I can. <laughs> How long have you guys been married for? 20, oh, uh, six, 25 years. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't hear that often anymore. I don't know. I have some friends who've been married longer. Do you? <laughs> yeah. That's my grandparents just hit 64 and then my grandpa passed. But yeah, you, it's nice to hear them lasting long. And you know, if it takes a punch to the eye every once in a while to keep you in place. Well, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. That's awesome. I was basically a hippie in search of a commune before I met her. <laughs> <laughs> and she found it, hey? That's right. We live, in, so, we live in our own private little commune, Lazy Acres, we call it. That's awesome. Okay, so we are live. Are we live, Jess? We are, are we, live. Are we really, Jess? We've had some technical issues here this morning, which, you know, she, always makes life a little more fun. Oh, she said, oh, we're live. <laughs> yeah, I can see yeah. your picture. Your picture's still up there, Jess. I'm so, checking. On, I'm just checking on my phone here to see if we are actually live. So for all of yeah. you watching, is this you your house that you're you're in? It's both of our homes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we decided I'm to make it office. cozy. You what? Sorry. I'm in an office. Oh, nice. Well, it looks nice and warm behind you. Yeah, maybe I can open this to kind of. Give it a little more depth. Is that better? Oh, there's palm trees. Yeah. There's palm trees. Okay, we are live. So Jess is off, but we are live. <laughs> so we're just going to roll. Welcome That's to the weird. Canadian Social. We're here today with Dave Thomas. Dave. Pretty amazing Dave. guest. It's such an honor to have you here. Truly, truly. You're like a Canadian legend. We've been talking about this and we're like, like so many people we talked to, they're like, you just like shaped like our generation a little bit with the comedy and the humor and what we watch. So it is truly an honor to have you here today. We're really grateful. Well, thank you. That's very flattering. So well, when we, oh, go ahead, Renee. You're coming to us from LA, I'm gathering, because we don't have palm trees here in Canada. That's right. Those are props I had those planted this morning just for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they would give the bleakness of where I really am. <laughs> so Tara explained to me that you are on your, you were showing us your sandwich earlier. You are on your lunch break <laughs> and you are filming today. Yes. So that is pretty exciting. So as Tara said, yeah, you have kind of shaped our generation with your humor and your beer drinking bottle. <laughs> I watched a snippet of that last night. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm working with a writer and I told him that I look at that stuff now. I don't even remember most of it. I don't remember doing it. It's literally <laughs> so long ago that I don't, I don't remember it. Really? Well, yeah. it, can't, it can't be that long ago because I'm 28 for the 14th time. <laughs> and I remember watching it when I was younger. So <laughs> it can't be that long ago, Dave. Yeah. It can't be. <laughs> well. Well, yeah. you've done so much stuff since. Like, it's just absolutely amazing. I mean, I, when I was going through all your stuff, I was just like, wow. Like, I mean, I've seen you in so many things over the years. But, like, when you put it all in, like, one paragraph, it's, like, pretty mind-blowing. <laughs> well. I'm very close to death now. 
because I'm so old. And if you don't have at least a good paragraph before you die, then you've really botched it, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, you know, I've had to keep working because I was a fool with my money. So I was, you know, I never saved anything and I was, uh, had to, I just had to keep working. I will never be able to retire. I will be working as they wheel me in on that final day. <laughs> Well, so one thing I was surprised about is I think of you and I think of the shows, you know, SCTV and all the movies yeah. you've done. And what I was surprised to find out is that you don't just act. You're not just a comedian. Like you actually have a company called Animax Entertainment. And, and I, well, you go ahead. I had that company for a little over a decade, but I don't anymore. Uh, oh, okay. We did animation, and um, I had a film production company, yeah. also that I don't have anymore. I've tried everything, you know. Now I'm just writing, and I'm not even—I don't perform much anymore. Mm -hmm. I really rarely get in front of the cameras, and it's mostly writing. And right now, I'm working on a pilot for TBS Turner Broadcasting, and a pilot for um, the CW and warner brothers yeah so they're they're one is comedy and one's drama oh wow so how did you get started tell us this how did you get started in sctv how did you get started in acting you are from canada you were raised in ontario from what i understand well, and as I, a, as a canadian born, how did you get to where you are i was born in ontario yeah, but I was actually when I was six, we went to North Carolina and I was there for six years. And then we went to Great Britain for two years and then I came back to Canada. So can kind of bookended my childhood. <laughs> um, but I got into entertainment really. At, I started doing plays at McMaster University with Marty Short and Eugene Levy. And um, and then after. Um, after they graduated, they went to do Godspell in Toronto, and I didn't know what to do. And I got pretty pretty good grades after my fourth year of my bachelor's um, undergrad degree in English Lit. So they gave me uh, a scholarship to tutor, like to be a you know. A, a, a graduate student and also teach first year tutorials, which of course I hated doing, but <laughs> I had to do it because it was the only money that I could get was the mm -hmm. scholar and the um, tutorial money. And then while I was doing that, um, a part came up in Godspell and Eugene called me and said, you better get to Toronto right away because they're auditioning for Godspell to replace a couple of actors. And um, so I drove to Toronto and I got auditioned and got in. And then I had to go, I had to basically abandon my master's degree work in English Lit during the day because I was in rehearsals. And then I did Godspell at night. Once I got past the rehearsal, I could attend some classes again and pretend to be a graduate student, but um, it was uh, it was a grind. And then after Godspell, I couldn't get any work, and so uh, I wrote up some fake ads, and I I got a job as a copywriter in advertising, and I did that for a couple of years. And then Second City, the stage show, was having auditions, and I went down audition for that, and I got in, and then. That basically launched me in Second City Stage, and then SCTV came out of Second City Stage, and from SCTV came the Bob and Doug stuff, and the movie Strange Brew, and the record. It all sort of came out of Second City. Excuse me. <coughs> so that's how I got into business. Wow. Oh. It's amazing how something like throwing an ad on a napkin and just winging it well, can take you how far too. I think, I think when you're a kid 
and I was definitely a kid back then. I think you have to wing it. I think if you don't wing it, you don't have anything, you know? And um, if you can't take chances when you're young, you don't have really a hope of being able to do the kinds of stuff that you want to do, you know? And I, I, I mean, I was, I had a pretty successful career in advertising going, and I dumped it for a second city stage because when I saw that show, that was really something I wanted to do. You know, that looked really, really like fun. And you, when you're in your mid twenties, you don't think about your future. Now I probably should have thought about my future a little more than I did when I was younger, but ah, what are you going to do? <laughs> You've got forever <laughs> to think about that. That's right. <laughs> So do you have, I'm just curious, like, do you, because you do do drama as well as comedy, do you have one that you prefer or do you just love doing both? Well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I, it doesn't, you know, the dramas that I've written usually have a kind of a light touch to them. They're like, I worked on Bones that, Fox TV show for three years, and I worked on another show called The Blacklist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their dramas, they're, 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 they're kind of, they have a little sense of humor to them. I, you know, I, I like a show that has fun dialogue that takes turns that you don't expect, and um, and that uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, fun to write and I don't like sitcoms they're a little too predictable and a little too formula formulaic for my taste mm -hmm. I like single camera uh, film things video now everything's video but um, but I do you know um, so that's the style of stuff I do but I've, I've been doing that kind of stuff like since the very beginning, you know, I mean, I was given an opportunity at the beginning of my career to do a hour for Showtime. And really at that time, Showtime was just doing those stand up comedians standing in front of a brick wall. And that's what they wanted me to do. And I took all the money that they gave me and added some of my own and did this time, time travel movie, a little hour movie about a guy, a history teacher that gets transported to different times because he's very unhappy in the time that he lives in. And that wasn't at all what they expected, but it's what I wanted to write, you know? Um, yeah. So I had, I had a similar opportunity with CBS and they asked me to write a power pilot. And I came to them with a pilot about a runaway robot. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's what we shot. We I wrote it and we shot it, and it wasn't what they expected, and they didn't pick it up as a series. But it's what I wanted to write, you know. So I've been pretty lucky in being able to do that my whole career, write what I want to write. So where do you find inspiration for this stuff? Like for uh, the out of you out write of the, out of the terror of not being able to pay my rent. <laughs> That is always a good motivation. It's amazing what ideas you can come up with when you don't have enough at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So on top of doing the shows and on writing, you've also raised four children. Yeah. Well, so credit to my wife. <laughs> she did more, more of that than I did. But, you know, yeah, I've been a father and a dependable father in terms of time and money. Yeah. The things that kids really need the most out of their dads. If they wanted to talk about something, I would be there for them. And if they were gotten a jam needed some cash, I was there for them. So you've done your job fun. well. Yeah. Yeah. So how has it been raising children in this industry? It's the hardest thing in the world. I'm I bet. Kidding. I yeah, can't it, imagine. It's the hardest job by far I, that I've ever had and could ever imagine. And it's harder than any job in showbiz uh, that I ever had. It's really, <laughs> it's insane. And constant. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my kids grew up in Malibu, 
and hung out with some kids that were not good kids. And mm -hmm. I had to do all kinds of policing that I just didn't want to do. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. All, and, all four have survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have. Your job's been done well. <clears throat> We're hoping ours survives. So yeah. you know, <laughs> we like to take any advice we can. <laughs> there, there were times when I said to my children, you know, in my kind of nihilistic, sardonic way, it's my job to get you to adulthood alive. Yeah. Then after that, if you want to kill yourselves, that's up to you. You know, you are on your own. <laughs> but I, you know, that was the line in the sand that I drew that, you know, in terms of uh, permissiveness, if I thought they were doing something that ultimately was going to hurt them, I, I would do everything I could to stop it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so but it's a tough job. I think it's a really, and, and I honestly believe, you know, from the point of view, like my wife's a homemaker, that's what she yeah. does. And, and sadly in this world, that doesn't that doesn't get assigned the value that it's actually worth. Mm -mm. That you know, if my wife were to say to me, based on what I do around here, I should be paid half of what you make, I would agree with that. I would say actually probably more. And I I think there is a tendency not to give not to assign the proper value to that that it actually deserves. Cause you know, ferrying kids around, picking them up from school, taking them here and there, making sure they're safe, you know, taking care of their food and, and taking care of the house. That is, that's a, that's a huge job. And, you know, my wife has done that, you know, without, without hesitation and without any complaints for her whole life. And I consider that to be extremely valuable. Mm hmm. It sure and is. I love her for it. And I love That's... her for it. <laughs> snaps, anyway. Plus, we get snaps to your wife. <laughs> it's not the easiest job in the world. I think it's. I think it's insane. You know, and I, <laughs> and I, uh, I just think that um, the childbearing process is difficult enough. But then taking care of the kids is insane. And, and I, you know, I, because I could make the money, I could make more money than she could. It made sense for me to do that and her to take care of the house. But I always gave it value. I always made sure that I didn't undermine it or, you know, devalue in any way. Mm -hmm. So, so it, how, how was it, how was it though? Like, uh, having to be so um, visible your whole life, like on camera, in front, like, was it an experience that you enjoyed? Like, did you enjoy the camera or is it kind of like, cause like, like I know for me, like before we started the show and kind of starting to get visible, I was like, ah, you know, I'd hide, but let's just pretend nobody's in the room now. And we like to laugh and have some fun, but <laughs> <laughs> it's still, sometimes it's like, it's a scary thing, right? Are you talking about the physicality of acting or are you talking about I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, I guess just mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure when you walk up and down the streets, you get high a lot. Like, people just recognize oh. you like, for so many years. Was well, that, I like, that. fun or annoying? <laughs> I always liked that. I, I thought that was really nice. And I, I was always as, as polite and gracious as I could be to anybody that stopped me. You know, I mean, that's why we do this. We don't do this in a vacuum. We do this because we want to have a relationship with the audience. And I think when an actor gets snooty and won't sign an autograph or acts like a dick in front of their fans, I think that's uh, unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was always really happy and grateful. A cu couple of times I had people be jerks, you know, I had one guy, <laughs> I had one guy one time in Vancouver who came up to me at lunch and he said, you know, a bunch of my friends sitting over there said, you're some big hot shot and I should know who you are. Well, who the hell are you and why should I give a shit? <laughs> so Way to sugarcoat people, that. When you, when you have people come up to you like that, then, okay, then I think it's okay to give them, to diss them and, 
you know what I mean? Give them a shot back. But most of the people are really nice and really friendly and just genuine fans and come up to you smiling because you've made them laugh. And that that's a, that's a really nice thing. I bet it is. So Blaine just messaged me, our other co-host from the airplane, and says he wants to know what was one of the highlight moments of your career? Jeez. Okay. I've had a few. Let me tell you some of them. I've, I played golf with Bob Hope. I spent oh. time with him at his house. I had lunch with Johnny Carson. I drove across Texas with Dan Aykroyd writing a, a movie about UFOs. Uh, I made John Cleese laugh in Rat Race. I mean, I've had, I can list a number of things that are real highlights in my career that uh, I thought were just amazing moments, you know? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Uh, I, oh, I remember Dad Aykroyd, those, uh, the Blues Brothers. I used to watch them all the time. <laughs> I was a big fan, so that'd be so cool. So, and, the, and the great outdoors that was another one of my favorite i used to watch a lot yeah yeah that's so, so cool if one thing we've talked a lot about with our guests on the show and it seems to come up a lot if you could leave a legacy of your life or a mark leave your mark in this world what would it be oh god i don't know <laughs> <laughs> to make people laugh that's, that's way too you can uh, just tell her to stop <laughs> that's, that's assigning too much worth to what i do you know mm -hmm. i i'll tell you if i could do it all over again i might become a doctor i might not do this at all i might uh, and and to be able to say of my two lives in one life i made people laugh and in the other life i made them better yeah that would be good you know but yeah. I, I think I don't really see a heavy legacy that I've left behind. You know, I got some laughs. I gave some laughs. I made some money. Thanks. It's been a good run. See you later. <laughs> it's been a slice. <laughs> but you know what? That's amazing, too, because not enough people do laugh today. And I know for any situation you go through, it's so important to laugh and find humor in anything and everything because life can be way too serious, as you said, and it can be heavy. And I think the power of laughing and comedy has, I think there's such a value to it. Well, I, yeah, I, we, I think laughter is medicine. So, you know, if that's my thing, if I'm having a real crappy day, I'm like, I need to find something that's going to make me laugh. So, you know, these have been go-tos over <laughs> the years. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, so when we were talking about this, we're like, we thought, we think of you as like the legend, <laughs> one of the legends of Canada's comedy for like just years. Well, as I look at my image in this screen here, I think of myself as a hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like my shoulders, because I'm leaning forward, are really like rounded and like I have a big hump on my back. So I just want to straighten that out to everybody that I'm not a hunchback. <laughs> so, Although I would like to go to Notre Dame Cathedral. That would be nice. That would be nice. Blaine wants to know what stresses a comedian out. <laughs> Blaine wants to know what stresses out a comedian. What causes you stress? No laughs. <laughs> kind of an audience and you get no laughs. I don't think there's anything more stressful than that. <laughs> I suppose that would be very true. Yeah. So what's next for you, Dave, in life? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, if one of these pilots gets going, then it, it would be working on that show. If not, it'll be trying to sell another pilot and work on that. So um, what the, you go ahead. Well, no, you go ahead. What is no, involved you... <laughs> in a pilot? And like... you basically do many drafts of a script for executives who don't know how to write. <laughs> and, um, and then they decide whether or not it fits into their schedule. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, if you don't actually like the process of writing, it's a very unrewarding thing to do. But I happen to like the process of writing. So, even if I have to do multiple versions, um, solving those problems, that's, that's fun. I enjoy that. 
So it's, it's not a means to an end, it's an end in itself. But what a neat line of work to actually spend your day writing stories and writing things to make people laugh and having those shows carry on for decades. Yeah. Oh, Jessica's cool. got a question. She wants to know who you like in comedy today. Well, um, Bill Hader, that show Barry, I think is a good show. And although it's a dark comedy show, I think that's good and funny and I like him. Um, let's see. Well, right, when you say, who do I like in comedy today? Today's comedy has a lot of older people in it, like Larry David, Curb Your Enthusiasm. That show made me laugh a lot. I thought it was really a funny show. Um, Norm MacDonald makes me laugh, even though he's older, but He's still pretty outrageous and stuff that he does makes me laugh. Um, they're, uh, most, most of the functioning comedians that are out there make me laugh, you know, but there's two that I, two or three that I, that I particularly like. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Tara, Tara, I'll let you shoot the next one. <laughs> Um, let me see it. You guys are doing all good with all these questions. Oh, well, I would, I would love to know what was it like working with Jason Bateman? <laughs> I'm just curious. That like, was is short, it? <laughs> that was a short uh, experience because I really only did one show with Jason on, on of the five or six that I did of Arrested hmm. Development. But he's a really nice guy. And he was really yeah. fun to work with. And for a while, I rented a house on, in Malibu, and his sister uh, lived in the lower part. So I got to know him when, when I lived there. Yeah. That's I was wondering, like, behind the scenes, it must be funny. And your, your brother, he's in the music industry, is, isn't that correct? Or was right. years ago? He still is, yeah? Still is. Still working. Yep. Still gigging. Okay. <laughs> Funny. He's very funny on stage. I, I've seen his show. I actually did a show with him, and I thought he was really good. Well, so, I remember some stuff from, like, a, a while back, but yeah, that's, that's cool. You come yeah. from, like, a family of creatives. Yeah, my mom was a church organist, and my father was a, a minister for a while, and then later became a philosopher. Really? Yeah, he taught philosophy at McMaster. Well, at a couple places but McMaster's where he ended up mm -hmm. that's amazing well I am super excited to see your new shows great when they get past the pilot stage all right and we hear it you, you you're, sorry I said I hope you do and I'm sure then, they will come through <laughs> yeah so what are like you were saying it's a comedy and a drama you've got the two can you give us a little bit of detail about those or is that on like a down low? Hush it's on hush. Down low. You, you can't talk about those while they're in okay. the film. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. I don't Fair know enough. this industry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been awesome having you on the show today. Thank you. So awesome. We yeah, really it's... appreciated it. And we've been throwing around the hoser comments and the A's <laughs> a lot on our show leading up to this. My breath. My brother is our other co-host and he's a huge fan and he was so upset that his flight was at the same time as a show today. He's on the way to Manila. Well, tell him safe flying and uh, sorry I missed him. Yes, well next time if we have you back or when you, if you want to come back on with us again, we'll have to let Blaine, Blaine come on with us. He went to get a tattoo and he just said, we love you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, he's flying all the way to Manila just for that. Yeah, for a tattoo. <laughs> Went to, all the way to Manila, Manila to get a tattoo? You know, apparently our Canadian tattoo artists just aren't quite to his standards as they are over. In, I think it was an excuse for a holiday. He has three kids, too, and runs a business. And I think he's lying. I think he had another agenda. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're very right. <laughs> well, well he's doing some well. other work over there, too, I think. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave, for okay. joining us. And it was See such you. a pleasure meeting with you. Good luck on the pilots. 
Yes, thank, thank you. you so much for your time. It's been such an honor. All right, thanks. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. See you.